first, I'd like to introduce my wife. She's the one that keeps me going straight. Right over there, Judy. Go stand, please. Thank you. Praise the Lord for my wife. 47 years. 47 all together is 94 years. 47, 47. So praise the Lord for my wife. And also thank you for Brother Pastor Terry for inviting us to come. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, it's a good experience, a new experience for me to come here. And I praise the Lord that he has invited us. And thank you for the good hotel, the beautiful place, the good food. Thank you. Great fellowship, good memories. Memories. So thank you. And thank you who've been faithful to come every night. Praise the Lord. I thought the first night, Thursday, I will preach. Friday, it'll be empty. <laughs> Praise the Lord, you came back. Amen. Uh, I thought I would show you a little bit of the, the culture, just short, because tonight we have, uh, really not a slide, that's old fashioned. We have a video tonight we want to show you. It's almost seven minutes. It'll give you an idea of what we do in Russia. Part of it's about the deaf churches, part of it's about the Russian hearing churches, part of it is about the English church. So I want you to see that tonight, okay, 6 o'clock. Don't forget, be on time. Time. That means we start at, what time do we start? 6.05. All right. Uh, <coughs> tonight. Let me, let me show you some of the tradition from Russia. For example, you want to buy your wife some flowers? You never buy even number. Here in America, 12 roses is a good thing. But in Russia, even means it's for a funeral. So you always buy odd number of flowers. When, when you meet and you go into a house, you're going to go on visitation like here yesterday and next, I guess, every Saturday, I don't know when. But uh, you go on visitation, you always bring a gift for the people when you meet them. When they open the door, you give them flowers, you give them candy, something. You give them for respect and honor because you're going to go into their house. But never even number of flowers. In fact, when we first arrived in Russia, was you praying at that time? I didn't know that, even odd, I, uh, odd, I didn't know that. So I met the lady, they have a special place in our town that's just full of flowers. Min, 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 beautiful, fresh. So I met the lady and I said, I said, I want to buy some uh, flowers for my wife. I want 12 roses. And the lady said, are you from here? I said, no, I'm from America. The lady said, you don't want 12 roses. And she explained, 12 even means funeral. Did your wife die? I said, no, she's alive. She died. <laughs> okay, I will sell you 11 or 13. I'm not going to sell you 12. That's wrong. You need to learn. So, thought. Odd number. Uh, <clears throat> other tradition, last. Never, never shake hands or do business through a door. Right here, <clears throat> the door. Never reach through and shake hands with the person. That's bad luck. On for, for example, on a train, you're sitting in your room on the train, and the lady or the man comes to ticket, punch the ticket. They come, you open the door, and you hand the ticket, foreign people. Through the door, <coughs> the man on the other side puts his foot in your room <laughs> and receives the ticket. Bad luck. Reach through to shake hands. <laughs> Bad luck. Strange. Different culture, different places, different things. 
in church, uh, in uh, church, sitting in church. Men never cross their legs in church. Never. Not respectful. Lazy. Am I right? <laughs> when when you kneel down to pray, here in America, sometimes you see. But, but uh, never, always two knees, full, humble before God. This, proud. Strange, different way, different country, different culture. You have to learn the culture if you want to reach the people. So, interesting place. Come and visit with us. You will enjoy it. You will see strange things, nice things, beautiful things. Ah, ah. It's different. Okay. <coughs> Acts chapter 2. Ah, ah. Acts chapter 2. Ah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Our ability to read the Bible and grow. Our responsibility is to plant the seed. That's all. So don't become discouraged. When you go on visitation and it seems like you're knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking and nobody's home, don't get discouraged. You're doing your job. Your responsibility is to plant the seed. Uh, you go, you witness, and you witness, and you witness, and it seems like nobody's getting saved. Nobody's responding. Nobody's getting saved. Don't get discouraged. It's not your re uh, responsibility to save people. It's your responsibility to sow the seed. And if you remember that, it becomes easier to witness because the results are his responsibility. You don't get saved, you don't want to get saved. Fine. No problem. Go to another person. See? Every church has needs in it. Some churches need more uh, nursery workers and they flash up on the screen we need more nursery workers with the children come and help us or other churches need Sunday school workers or whatever here are some things that every church needs every church needs to have number one clear honest truthful preaching. Clear, honest Bible preaching. You have that here. The preaching is from the Word of God. Many churches don't have that. In many churches today, the pastor has the feeling that he needs to make the people feel good. People come to church today, other churches, not here, they come to church with the idea it's the pastor's responsibility to feed me. So I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to wait for food from God. No, 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 no. It's your responsibility to feed yourself. You're old enough. Other churches, not here, feel the pastor's responsibility is provide entertainment, fun, activities, enjoy things. I come to church, it's like a club. This is not a club. This is the church of God. This is the place of worship. Here's where we come to encourage each other to start tomorrow back to work. Here we come to pray for one another because tomorrow we go back into the world and we fight the devil tomorrow. So we come here, it's like, you know, an oasis. You know what that means? It's an island in the middle of the desert. A place where you can go and drink. And all around it's dry, it's hot, it's empty. But here, an oasis, a place where it's quiet, 
where people pray for us, we encourage one another, here in church, every church needs good preaching. We in America have gotten away from preaching the Word of God, and we've started trying to make people feel better. There's a man on TV, his first name, Joel. You know who? Oh, it's in, oh, oh it's it's got a big place. Before, I think it was basketball or something. Basketball place. And they have balcony and then balcony and balcony. It's just full of people. Don't call that a church. It's not a church. It's a meeting. Okay? Church is different. And he speaks. He doesn't preach. He never talks about sin. He never talks about hell. Only, I hope you tomorrow will be better life. That's not preaching. We need preaching from the Word of God that tells sinners that they will go to hell without Jesus Christ. We need preaching that will challenge Christians to live right, to do right. Every church needs clear, honest preaching. And here you have that. Don't get ashamed. Don't get mad. Get right. Change your life. Get it with the Word of God. Suppose the mailman brings you a letter tomorrow in your mailbox, puts it in, and the letter, you open it, and you read it, it says... You owe IRS one million dollars. Sign. And you get mad. I already paid that every year I paid it. I don't owe anything. I'm mad. So you meet the, the mailman. Why'd you bring me that letter? What for? I don't owe. Is that all right? The mailman is responsible for your problem? No. He just brought the letter, that's all. It's the same as the preacher. He preaches the Word of God. He gives you the verses from the Bible. If it's your conviction or you have sin in your life, don't get mad at the preacher. It's not his words. It's God's words. Get mad at God. No, don't do that. It's dangerous to do that. Every church needs clear honest preaching from the Bible. Notice here, let me ask you a question. Here in chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, who's the preacher? Who? Who's preaching here? Acts chapter 2. 5,000 people get saved. Wonderful. Are you sure? You sure? It's Peter. Peter's preaching here. And 5,000 people get saved. Do you like that here? I'd enjoy to see 5,000 people get saved one time. How would you like to baptize 5,000 people? <laughs> 5,000 people were saved. But notice the clear preaching. Notice chapter 3. Come down to verse 15. 
You kill the prince of life. You, 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 you killed the prince of life. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't kill anybody. Not me. Yes, our sin killed Jesus Christ. Clear preaching. After Peter preaches, they didn't wonder. What's he talking about? Never. They understand clear. Go down to verse uh, 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent. Repent. Become new. Get saved. Today in America, people would not accept that. Why? We become we become comfortable in our nice church building. We become comfortable in our air conditioning. You like lights? In our church, several years ago, every Sunday night, the government would turn off the electricity. Electricity? Electricity. Electricity. Russian. Anyway, every Sunday night, the government would turn off the electricity. Just at the time we were going to start church service. Wednesday too. So what do we do? We cancel church? No way. We met together. Slava had the I Slava, our deaf pastor, had the idea to have a battery, you know, from a car. And he ran a wire up to the middle, hanging from the ceiling, and he had a tail light. So we hooked it. <coughs> That's not bright. You know, from your car, tail light. We hung it in the middle of the church. And then we preached. We didn't cancel church. We don't have air conditioning in our church. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yes, we do. We have seven windows we open. And it comes through. It's air conditioning. When it's hot outside, it's also hot inside. When it's cold outside, it's also cold inside. Very comfortable. Easy to get used to that. If it's cold outside, you know you should have a coat for church. If it's hot outside, you know you should bring a fan. We don't cancel church. Here, the clear preaching of the Word of God changed people's lives. Changed different lives. We need some clear preaching. 2 Timothy chapter 4 says, Preach the Word. Not, pre not preach your tradition. Not preach your favorite book. Not preach your favorite topic. Preach the Word. Period. Don't get, uh, don't get upset with me or upset with anybody except God. He said it right here. Okay? Number two. Mm. Good, very good. Verse 37. Verse 37. Verse 36, verse 36 says, 36 says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye crucified, both <coughs> Lord and Christ. You notice, Peter said, You Israel, you crucified Jesus Christ. It was you. I was preaching. What happened? Did people get mad and leave the church? No. The next verse, 37, says, Now, when they heard this, 
they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? We understand Jesus was crucified. We understand it was our sin that nailed him on the cross. We understand that. It's our responsibility. Now what do we do? What's next? You see? The people's heart was touched. The preaching touched the heart of the people. They didn't get mad. They didn't get upset. <coughs> they didn't leave church. They didn't go and complain and gossip. They got money. That's what good preaching will do. It will change lives. It will change people. After you're saved, the Bible says, you become a new creature. New. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Different. Are you the same now, the same as before you were saved? If you are, you need to check your salvation. Maybe you're not saved. It says, they were pricked in their heart. It was from the Bible. Okay, what do I do? You notice these are not Baptist people. They're not Baptists. Because if they were Baptists, they would get mad and leave. These are real Christians. What do I do? I know I'm wrong. I'm guilty. I'm sinful. What do I do? And Peter says, sin. They knew they were wrong in their life. Peter had preached to them. And they said, what do we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you. You notice the order? Repent and then be baptized. Not together. Repent and then be baptized. Every one. Okay, they said. Verse 41, and they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day was added unto them about 3,000 souls. Repent and be baptized. Okay, I will do that. And they obeyed the word. They were saved, then they were baptized, and they were added 3,000 souls in that one day. I can't imagine that. Today, many times you hear about going to another country like, I don't know, Nigeria or someplace, and preaching, and 10,000 people get saved. Have you seen that before? Read that? I doubt it. There's no change. There, there's, no, there, there's no change in their life. Here, not only were they saved, but verse 41 says, they received Christ, they were at about 3,000, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. You notice it said the word doctrine? We don't like that word doctrine. They continue, they continue, they continue in doctrine, prayer, breaking bread, and fellowship. Now, let me ask you a question. What was here the apostles' doctrine? What does that mean? Do we have today 
the Apostles' Doctrine. Uh, think about the time. Just recently here, just recently, Jesus had died, he was buried, he arose, and he ascended. That's all they have. Plus, whatever Jesus taught while he was alive, plus the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. That's all they have. And they continued and continued and continued. Breaking bread. What does that mean? Breaking bread. The Lord's Supper. We call it the Lord's Supper. Every day, you read your Bible, every day they had the Lord's Supper. Why? We do it once a, every four months or once a year or once a month, whatever. They did it every day. Why? Because it had just recently happened. They didn't want to forget what had happened. They didn't want to forget what Jesus Christ had, had uh, done for them. Every day they remembered the death of their Savior, Jesus Christ. Every day. It was so important. Every day. House to house to house. After they were saved, they did right. They just kept on going with their Christian life. They prayed, they had the Lord's Supper, uh, they fellowshiped. <laughs> Fellowship's interesting. Bible fellowship. Here in America, we have fellowship in a Baptist church. What does that mean? Always means eating. <laughs> Always. And most of the time, chicken. It's a law. It's a Baptist law in America. You must have chicken for fellowship. Here at this time, when they had fellowship, what what they talk about? Football, baseball, basketball, volleyball. What they talk about? I think they talk about who died for Jesus Christ last week. Who was mocked in the group? Who suffered, suffered, suffered last week for their faith? Who? Did you know Saul last week, he was preaching on the street, and the soldiers came and killed him and cut off his head? That was fellowship. Because of so much persecution of Christians at that time, their fellowship was not a fun time sitting, sitting around the table eating, saying, no, no, no. They were curious. Hey, did you hear about what happened over here? Claudia over here. Did you hear about you know what happened? Oh, it was awful. She was she's a believer and she was she was witnessing and they caught her and they put her in prison. No TV in prison here. Fellowship, praying, Lord's Supper. And then every day they continued and continued after they were saved. They went to church every day. It's hard to pull people to come to church once a week here. But in here, every day they went to church. They went, they, really they had church in the house because there were so many Christians at that time. Some people think in Jerusalem, the church at Jerusalem grew to more than 25,000 people. They can't meet together. So they divide it up into houses. And the apostles would go to this house and preach and give the Lord's Supper. And then they would go to this house and preach and give the Lord's Supper and pray. And then they would go to this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. Can you imagine 25,000 people? That was the result of clear preaching, conviction, people who wanted to obey God and then last. <laughs> Praising people. Verse 46, 47. They continued daily, it says, daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house 
they did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, praising God, having favor with all of the people, and the result, the result, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Praising, praising people. Praising the Lord. They suffered, they were persecuted, but they were praising people. Here, we have everything we want. Everything we want. So much that we don't need, we still have it. <coughs> How many of you have a garage? You have a garage? Okay. If you have a garage, how many of you still can your car in the garage? <laughs> you still have your car in? Amen. You're rare. <laughs> most people, most people in America who have a garage, it's full of junk that they never use. <laughs> And it becomes full. What do we do? We go and we rent another garage in another place and we fill that one. Truth or not, which? Is that true? I've seen them driving on the highway. On the uh, highway, they have like. Have you seen that before? Storage. What's inside? Things that don't fit in the garage at home, we put it over here. We don't use it. We most of the time don't remember what's inside, but we have it. Things. These these people praised the Lord, even though they had mocking, persecution, suffering, being killed for Jesus Christ. Still, they can praise the Lord. Wow, what a good example for us. Every church needs people that praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what's happening. We still can praise the Lord. He is in control, right? He's the boss. He can do whatever he wants. I don't need to ask. Is it all right? Doesn't matter what I think. He is, he does whatever he wants. And I should be happy. Praise the Lord. Cancer? Awful. Awful thing. Praise the Lord. I don't know why. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. All things work together for good to them that uh, love God and are called according to His purpose. All things work together for good. Cancer is good. Maybe not for me. But maybe for the person, the doctor, that I can witness to. You see? It's for his purpose. His purpose. Every church needs to have uh, praising people that are happy they're saved, have a good testimony. They can witness. It says, notice, it says, verse um, 47. Praising God and having favor with all of the people. Favor with the people. Does that mean perfect? Favor with people. Does that mean perfect? No. It means they can't blame about anything. They live like God planned. Not perfect. Following God. Best of can. And then the result... God added to the church every day, every day, every day. We want that. I want that. This church wants that. You want that. How? We need to stop thinking about ourselves and start thinking about other people who are going to hell forever. And they will stay and stay and burn and burn. Your neighbors, my neighbors, your relatives, my relatives. Without Jesus Christ, there's no hope. 
I can't imagine, I can't imagine how bad it will be to stand before God and God says, your relatives, you didn't tell them. Or to hear from hell the screaming and screaming, why you didn't tell me? Every church has, every church has the responsibility to witness every, you say, well, that's the church's business. Read your Bible. You are the church. The church is not the building. You are the church. Your responsibility, my responsibility, we have to do what God says. We have to. We need to revive it. We need to wake up. It's time. It's past time to wake up. The world has gone crazy. I hate to get up in the morning and read the news. I hate to get up in the morning and read the news. New shooting someplace at a school or a mall or someplace. A new bomb blew up and killed many people. It's crazy. <coughs> the only hope is not President Trump. The only hope is not a new president. The only hope is Jesus Christ. That's the only hope people have. And if we don't tell them about Jesus Christ, they have a choice. You can be saved. You can decide to go to heaven. It's yourself, your responsibility. We don't tell them, then blame us. <coughs> I'm not going to take more time. We're running out. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, who's that? God said, if my people who are called by my name, are you called by his name? Are you a Christian? Jesus Christ, Christian, called by his name? If my people called by my name will do what? Humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their sin. Then, after that, I will heal their land. I will forgive their sin. Why has America gone crazy? Why has the world gone crazy? It's because Christians are not doing their job. Churches need clear preaching. That's only part. They also need people to become convicted by the Holy Spirit and then do right and then praise the Lord. No matter what happens, it's still God is in control. Let's stand, please. <laughs> if you say, I want to do God's will. I want to be involved in God's ministry. I want to be a better Christian. I want to serve God with my whole heart. I want God to bless me, answer my prayers. I want God to help me through my problems of life, my family, and all these things. If that's your desire, please today come and pray and ask God to help you. You can't do it yourself. Remember the verse, I can do all things through Christ. We need his help, his direction, his blessing. Come and pray right now. Come and pray and ask God to help you to do what you need to do. Come right now, please. Come. <clears throat> okay, if you'll look this way for a short time. Anybody have a testimony they would like to share about maybe you made a decision or God touched your heart or something this week and you would like to give a testimony? Anybody? Before we close, before Pastor comes, anybody?